Well, there's a range of companies that do that, and there's a series of companies we talk about in business school cases, for example, Southwest Airlines. Uh, at this conference today, we, we um, got a lot of information on Ocean Spray Cranberry. There's a lot of companies that do that, and there's a lot of evidence that if you treat your workforce better on a variety of dimensions, you get lower turnover rates, you get higher quality, you get more commitment, you get better relationships with your customers. There's research evidence that shows that that works on a range of industries from the most complex co technologies down to the people standing behind your desk when you check into a hotel. And so there's a lot of evidence on this. The hard question is why these practices aren't adopted uh, more widely. Well, there's different ways of thinking about that. I don't think there's a good answer to that question. I don't think we really understand that. Um, one answer to the question is just lack of information. And certainly there are cases where when, if, you, if you public authorities or manufacturing extension services or business associations can play a key role, if they educate their membership, some of these practices get adopted. No question about that. Another problem is that many firms, particularly small, medium-sized firms, management is under such intense time pressure, has so many things to do, that it's very time, not just time consuming, but risky to stop and re reorganize yourself. Uh, so it's just easier to stay on the same path that you're on. Another problem is that under, in some industries, they're under pressure from, from financial markets. Uh, to maximize profits in the short run, and that leads to lack of investment in the workforce, which is a long-run uh, kind of investment. So I don't think there's a single answer to that question. Uh, there's multiple answers depending on the nature of the firm. Well, I think on the first set of issues, I think developing strong intermediaries, public and private, business associations and other kinds of intermediaries to, to work with employers in their community, I think that would be important. And these intermedi intermediaries are out there, but they tend to be funded uh, hand to mouth by foundations or, or other sources of funds that are not reliable and consistent over the long run. So I think we need to strengthen that. Uh, I think in some cases it would, it would be important to develop ways of pressuring firms to improve their practices. Sometimes that pressure takes the form of union organizations. Sometimes that pressure takes the form of community groups. Sometimes that pressure takes the form of consumer groups. There's different levers that are possible in order to, to push firms in the direction of better work practices. So I think that would be um, another thing to think about seriously. Well, I think there's at least three, three things we can do. One is we're an educational institution, particularly uh, the, the, I were, the group we're talking about here, our little group, embedded in a business school. So to the extent that we can teach the MBA students about the payoffs to better quality jobs, I think that has a potential of diffusing out there into the world. Uh, secondly, our research. Uh, I said to you that there's a lot of research that shows that quality goes up and turnover goes down and customer satisfaction goes up if people are treated better. That research, a lot of it came out of MIT, came out of other institutions, and that research has played a role. And then finally, what's happening today, which is a convening, bringing together stakeholders representing different constituencies to talk about these things. Universities are not the only way to have those kinds of convenings, but they are one forum for that.